Bonnie, one of my favorite machines has always been the R44. It's an aircraft that, uh, boy, just uh, based on every uh, light, civil, and commercial mission you hand it, it can pretty much do it all. But let's face it, it's a machine that's been out there in the, in the uh, inventory for a while now and could use a little bit of updating. But this, this is updating a whole new glass cockpit for the R44. How did you come up with this? I, I agree with that, Jim. Actually, uh, my, my integrator had came up with that, and uh, <clears throat> through technology advances from the late 70s, uh, when, when glass was initially held, probably monopolized by the military because of the cost, now it's affordable in the R44. Getting here to that affordability was not easy. I, I can attest to that over the being associated with the project for the last 18 months. To see glass of this caliber in a airframe cost, w which is less than half of a million, is, it is a unique situation and it did take a lot, both on the business end and also on the technical end, uh, to get it here. To place us in the R44, the aircraft should be done for no less than a week because our integrator has done a very fine job of making it a very turnkey cookie cutter package for the R44. The cost on it is $64,950 and uh, that's uninstalled, however the un installation cost should not exceed that of, of, uh, of a week, roughly. Uh, when your grand arrives, your R44 grand, it will be in a box and it, in, within that box you will have everything from the lower console, okay. not, not including the lower console, but everything above the lower console will be included in that. Okay. And that is the instrument panel, and then the avionics shelf, which actually holds uh, the air data computer and the modules needed to make this installation work properly. There's a crossbow AHARS uh, that, that is installed under the, the, the pilot seat, and there's an interruption to the pitot-static, and other, that's as complex as the installation is. Aero TV is brought to you by Cirrus aircraft have always been easy to fly. Now they're easier than ever to buy. A complete line of ownership programs gives you everything you need to purchase, trade, finance, lease, insure, and warranty your Cirrus. There's even an ownership program for non-pilots. The Cirrus Access Pilot can teach you how to fly or fly the plane for you. Find out more at www.cirrusdesign.com. Cirrus, for the love of flying. The reason we're able to bring our instrumentation for our engines to the PFD is so that we can use the entire eight inches of glass for a moving map. That allows you to enter a, a cruise mode of flight and, uh, and really take advantage of, of the full eight inches of, of uh, terrain avoidance, traffic avoidance. Now, if you were to go up, uh, uh, climb to a cruising altitude, we can abbreviate the engines right here. We have our rotor, our engine, and our manifold pressure. These engine instrumentation must always be in front of the pilot, so we've abbreviated them on the PFD in a composite mode so that on the MFD we can use the entire eight inches for uh, our moving map or our traffic mm -hmm. or our, or our uh, GPS information. Some advantages, we can adjust this as a 10 mile radius, this is a 20 mile ring, and uh, we, can, we can zoom out if we're moving faster mm -hmm. or if we're moving slower like the cruise speeds of the R44, we can bring it right down to even a half mile uh, inner ring. Positioning the aircraft here is at the bottom of the screen, just nice electronics allow you for if you're flying more pilotage and dead reckoning to move the aircraft to the center of the screen and uh, you still have your radiuses and your ring, your distance rings. Going digital in a, in a glass cockpit also allows a, a few other um, advantages that, that are sometimes taken for granted. The, uh, the synchronization button on, on this suite, for instance, allows me at whatever heading I am to just press synchronize and it takes the current heading and mm -hmm. positions a bug there. Okay. And you can do the same for your altimeter, which is what I initially did. This is, I'm kind of in a configure here with the MFD set up for more low level, mm -hmm. uh, near the ground. We've got obstacles, trees, power lines. And uh, in doing so, I'm, I'm really concerned about my power. So I've got, I've got my power and my dual tech for my rotor and my engines uh, predominantly displayed on the MFD. That way I can spend as little time as possible within the cockpit. Um, we're flying the colors here very much uh, just for the human factors of, of green being go, red being stop, and, and yellow being caution. Um, uh, going back to where I was talking about, we're configured here for more of a, a outside the cockpit environment, not necessarily a cruise configuration, in that we have minimized our moving map 
and we've maximized our dual tack and manifold pressure while maintaining the PFD, the primary six pack. Okay. Glass makes it very easy to come into mm -hmm. a small area and without fatiguing you, come in and get that information and get back out into the mission where you need to be, especially most helicopter operations being VFR environments. Aero TV is brought to you by. Today, there is an affordable, high performance, easy to own, and easy to operate, very light jet designed with you in mind. Far less expensive than any other twin engine jet to buy, it is also the least expensive to own and operate. It is the Eclipse 500, the jet that's easy to buy, easy to fly, and fun to own. The jet for you. As I understand, this system was generated uh, from scratch as a wholly helicopter system, not as a conversion over from fixed wing. Uh, that, that is a fact, Jim. The uh, system was designed and has since been, been tweaked and developed originally for the Sky Crane. Those who, who may not be aware, the Sky Crane has the highest level of vibration, and that's a significant factor in, in certifying uh, helicopter avionics versus uh, fixed wing avionics. So, yes, sir, this, this is the result of, uh, of pioneering done by our, our Sky Crane brethren. And uh, so Jim has, has built other STCs for, for Eurocopter and, and Bell with this, this same helicopter certified uh, hardware and software. I've got 25 hours in it, and uh, this is the first glass that I have flown. And within that short period of time, I was able to, to take controls, take command of the aircraft, and transition into it rather seamlessly. Um, so, it, so that is an advantage of glass. It is easy to transition into. Talking about reliability, uh, traditionally, the reliability for instrumentation to be certified in the aircraft was one failure in a thousand. That's 10 to the negative third. And that's, that's instrumentation that has springs, needles, bearings, mm -hmm. bushings, moving diaphragms, parts. a lot of moving parts. And we've replaced that with solid state equipment, solid state light laser ring gyros, and, uh, and AHARs, and uh, solid state components. So now our reliability is up 10 to the negative sixth, which is one failure in a million. So there you have it, a little bit less than 65K, and you have full glass cockpit functionality in one of the sweetest helicopters ever designed. This takes an R44 and turns it into an R44. Grant and grand it is. For the Aero News Network and for Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell.